Welcome back everyone to day two of theCUBE's live coverage of MWISE here at the Marriott Marquis in Washington, D.C. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and analyst, Rob Strache. We have Jeff Reed. He is the VP Product, of Cloud, Product Cloud Security at Google Cloud. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Thanks Jeff. Thanks for having me. So we're going to talk about attack surface management, which is All really right. the foundation of risk management. I know there have been a few updates um, to Mandiant attack surface update, yeah. uh, uh, surface management. Can you tell us a little bit about the new features and what, what's been announced? Yeah, so, so let me start first. The thing I love about ASM is kind of one of those hidden gems that came along with the broader like Mandiant acquisition that we did. So obviously we have Kevin and all the IR and those capabilities. The threat intelligence is you know, world class, absolutely world class. But we also came with this attack surface management capability and really the helping customers understand like what are their vulnerabilities from an external perspective looking in. And so we've done a couple things. So one is we introduced in kind of an outcome-based view of our attack surface management functionality. So I want to look for specific things. They could be, you know, what about my development lifecycle, code repos, like what's available or not. Uh, searching for shadow IT capabilities across the, across the organization. So really trying to make the tool as like quick time to value as possible for, for, uh, for users and customers of it. So, so and it builds off all the capabilities that the, the tool has already. The second one is integration with what we're doing on the Chronicle Simmons source side. And maybe we'll talk a little bit more about what's happening there as well. But I think the key thing is the tech service management brings a set of contextual awareness around the, the types of alerts I'm getting on the SIM side and what do I know about them from a surface management perspective. And, and so it helps enrich those alerts with what we can see from an external view, helps prioritize which things, you know, the alerts that we also see, you know, have potential external visibility are more important and you'd want to prioritize them as you're going through your process of triage and, and on, the, on the response side from a SIM and store perspective. So those are a couple of the key areas that we've worked on on the ASM side that we're talking about this week. Yeah, no, it, it seems like, and again, we just had Kevin on and we were talking about yeah. red teaming and the attack surface is just getting bigger and bigger, especially 100%. when you have, now that you're part of Google, well, yeah. Mandiant's part of Google exactly. Cloud, it, I, I think, that tax service just spreads beyond just you know the four walls of a data center now. It's how are you doing your VPCs and things of that nature, yeah. right? Cloud, identity, shift left on the code side, like all these are surfaces that we're seeing more and more attackers go after. It, make, it makes total sense that, especially getting into the code, because I think a lot of it is where people may have had an accident with putting code in that's vulnerable. 100%. Are you seeing a lot more of that? Is that what some of these additions have been going? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think there's, you know, with uh, the number of the supply chain attacks over the past few years, I think the overall awareness of that as a vector and the, the, the radius of those, the blast radius of the attacks can be so significant, yeah. they're really important. And they're also just really impactful in terms of, a, of an organization's brand, reputation, et cetera. Like, you know, we know software is so critical, everyone's investing in software, but it's also a representation of your company and how customers are using those. And so, you know, making sure you're protecting that, that part of your environment's really, really critical. And, and does it help the customer prioritize what yeah. they should need to address, and it, how does that work? Exactly, exactly. So the, the way to think about it is, look, you get lots of alerts, you know, from your, your SIM environment, your other yeah. detection tools out there. One of the key things that I think the industry as a whole and we've been really working on in a couple of areas is how do you prioritize those things? What are the ones that are most critical for you to work on? And, and one of the inputs to that should be, hey, is this, I, I find an alert, is this something that's also showing up when I'm scanning from a attack surface management perspective? And so if it's both a potential problem and we think it's exploitable externally, that increases the, the prioritization that you should put on that. And, and that's where bringing the, that visibility on the attack surface management combined with the, the richness and, and all the, the alerts and findings that we have in the SIM and SOAR environment really makes sense. So how are these Mandiant solutions being integrated into Chronicle? Can yeah, you yeah. share a little more about that? Yeah, a whole bunch of different ways. <laughs> um, so, so when I start, so you just talked about attack surface management, so that's your short. 
It, we've done a couple other things, though. One of the things we're announcing you know, today, this week, yesterday, uh, was all the work we've done to integrate the threat intelligence that we have, both from Mandiant Threat Intelligence and Virus Total into Chronicle. And, and really what that is, is you know, helping you enrich the findings. Those can be IOCs, they can be you know, doing attribution, like we, we, we see an alert, we know that this is attached to a certain IOC, and we have attribution to the, the attackers that use that IOC. And bringing all that information right to the fingertips of the SOC analysts. So instead of having to, to swivel chair across multiple tools, I've got it all within my security operations platform, Chronicle, and it just makes you faster, allows me to prioritize better, and, and really just in general increases the overall security posture of an organization. So, so how, is, we were again talking with Kevin and I brought up the fact that Duet was one of the announcements integrated yeah. into Chronicle back at Google Next a couple weeks ago. How does that play with this whole, because it would seem that it's necessary just to help people <laughs> yeah. understand how much information 100%. is the use of AI and how that's going to help. Yeah, so we're really excited about this. Um, we talk of kind of the three key pillars of where we're using AI in the Chronicle environment. So, so in security in general, actually, just beyond Chronicle. So one's around like threats. Yeah, how do we make smarter decisions, quicker decisions around threat detection? And, and another kind of, I think, good example of Mandy integration into Chronicle is what we've done with Mandy at Breach Analytics. So we've taken the findings from all the Mandy IR activities, et cetera, and we've been able to, once, once they extract the TTPs, the IOCs from those engagements, we can essentially within an hour take, for example, an IOC, retroactively search all the customers using Chronicle with Mandiant Breach Analytics for the past year of have we seen any, have we seen that IOC in their environment ever before? Yeah. And, and so the idea being, Look, we may not be able to stop patient zero. There's always going to be like the, the, the first folks, but can we get to a point where can we stop patient one? So stop the spread because, you know, and we've taken that, we're going to go below an hour in, in the near future. So really reduce that time between we've, we've identified a, a specific you know, vector of a threat and how can we help make sure that that's not happening with any of our customers. So that's a great example. And then when you go into the other things, you know, the applications that do at AI, a lot of it's really around the, the talent and the, and the toil that you know, analysts, security professionals deal with every day. So a lot of that's been, you know, first, how do you just make you know, the repetitive tasks easier? And that could be, man, it's incredible, has the best finished intel in the world, but there is a lot of it. <laughs> And so if you're a you know, mid-sized regional bank and you want to understand like, who, you know, who might be the adversaries targeting you and your cohorts, what are the TTPs they're using, you're using the you know, Duet in Natty allows us, many in Threat Intelligence, allows us to quickly summarize that information. You know, and, and instead of taking hours you know, going through a lot of intelligence reports, can we get that to something that takes you minutes? And then, link to the sources, you can go deep dive further, but making that, that toil quicker and easier and faster. I think Rob, you're going to yeah. ask something. Here. No, <laughs> no, I, I think it, it just totally makes sense that, uh, and we were you know, looking at it from how do we get the next generation yeah. of folks interested in this, and everybody's like, hey, well, you know, we want to be AI engineers or prompt engineers now, and I, I think getting them to be, I have a son at Arizona State, studying com computer yep, science right yep. now, and it's, you know, there's a cybersecurity curriculum there, 100%. and I, I think it's how do you get people to engage more? Is that part of making it simpler to see the path and how I, these things come together? I think absolutely. You look, it's anything where if you make it more accessible and you make the, your entry level job a more, less busy work and more outcome related, and secondly, you make it so that the, the tools are easier to onboard, easier to work with out of the gate. And you know, another example of what we're doing in, in Duet, in Chronicle, is the ability for you to use a natural language search for your unified data model query. And look, UDM is relatively, you know, is not as well known throughout the security industry. And so instead of requiring someone who's just starting to 
understand that query language right away, can you said just say, you know, who are all the users that downloaded files that have PII over the last you know, seven days? And, and we generate that query on the behalf of the SOC analyst that can then be used. But we also show all the queries, so you can both use it but also learn about the syntax, how those queries are formulated. Yeah. So it allows you to, to, to make immediate you know, productivity gains, but also understand the technology in more depth as you go. So those are the types of things I'm really excited about. I think that the application of generative AI is going to be foundational across a lot of IT, and, and frankly, I think security will be one of the most important areas. Well, it, that's what is really striking to me about what Kevin Mandia said yesterday about how it is the solution to the overwhelmed security yeah, team. Actually, you can help defenders more. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we know about the enormous potential of AI, but the idea that it will help inspire younger people to get involved because they know they'll be able to make an impact, add value Quickly, right away, and yep. not be so consumed with busy work, but then yep. also help the veteran cybersecurity defenders 100%. who are, swimming in data and, and, and need some yeah. help sifting through it. Yeah, I, I've never met a CISO that has told me, I have all the people I need, <laughs> it's easy to retain yeah. them, yeah. et cetera. So I think this is just, you were, it was a foundational issue in the security industry around the, the, the scarcity of talents and the difficulty of, of retaining said talent. And, and I do think that you know, these steps forward will meaningfully change that. Yeah, I mean, going back to that, that retention, the talent retention issue, yeah. how do you solve it on your team? Because as you said, these are teams that are overworked, they're, <laughs> they're often demoralized because <laughs> this is, these are such intractable problems. How do you make these jobs more interesting and more attractive? Yeah, I think, look, I'm, I'm luckier than the average bear, you know, working <laughs> at Google. Um, I think one thing that we see is the scale, one of the things I think helps people want to stay at Google is the scale at which you can help customers, users, the world. I mean, we're operating on, we think, you know, our safe browsing, you know, hundreds of millions of users being protected by that. Our data loss prevention in workspace, billions of users. So there's a really, what, I've, what I found in the security industry is it, it tends to attract certain types of folks, but like where that, the kind of service component, the helping you know, the, the world is like a, a big part of what attracts them to the space and gets them to stay. And, and the nice thing, you know, at least in our world, is the platform upon which you can impact, you know, the, the world is actually quite large. Um, just based, because we have technology that is in the hands of so many customers and users. Yeah, it, it seems like that all these integrations and all of this coming together really could help the broader security community as well. Is, how do you see that playing out? Yeah, no, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And, and you see you know, some of the announcements you had this week with you know, like the Sentinel ones, the Core Lights. I, I think Google in itself, like we're, we're taking a, a more and more significant role in the security landscape. And so the integration of, for example, you know, what we do in threat intelligence, and we've always been doing that in like the virus total space, and it's really community sourced, and you know, bringing in Mandy and on top of that, I think is, Mandy's had such great relationships with so many other vendors, because you know, so many times when Mandy is being called in, you know, they're working to help a customer in concert with the, the other security vendors that customer's you know, utilizing. And so they're, they're I think they've, just brought in a lot of that, say, industry-wide relationships, engagements that has really helped kind of take Google security more broadly up to the, I think, the next level. So you said that Google is raising its profile within this community. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of the, the sort of urgent message that we heard yesterday from Chris Ray of, of wanting more public-private partnerships where the private sector is working with the government more readily to solve these problems. Do you think that that is something you're seeing more and more? 100%, yeah. So in fact, if, if you were at Next a couple weeks ago, yeah. uh, you know, in the security keynote, we had the, the director of the Israeli National Cyber Directorate right. come and speak in terms of the, the work that we're doing together with Israel and the work that he's been doing to take that and, and work with other nation, nations to bring this all together and, and thinking about, I think one of the nice things that we've been working on is using Chronicle 
because of its unique, it's so scalable, it searches so quickly, it's uniquely capable of bringing in these massive you know, public environments, public data sets, and be able to operate across multiple nations to help secure the, the public environment, utilizing a lot of the private investment that we've done. So, so I, I actually, we're really excited about this, and, and I think it's, it's, it's been something, that I think we've always had a lot of engagement, but I think that some of the dynamics are changing, and I actually think AI is another one that will kind of I think hopefully kind of change some of that, that dynamic as well for the better. Exciting times. Very exciting times. Jeffrey, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks the so much, I appreciate it. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strachey. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of MWISE. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>